Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier covering day two of Cisco DevNet Create 2019. And guess who we're here with? <laughs> <laughs> Susie Wee, SVP and CTO of Cisco DevNet. Susie, thank you so much for having theCUBE here and for joining John and me today. Oh, thank you for being here. So this event, there, it, there were so many bodies in here yesterday. It was pretty toasty, it's getting toasty now. It is. This is the third DevNet Create. This community, John and I have been hearing that and feeling it and seeing it. See it, learn it, Coda, kind of a la your theme there, the last day and a half. This is a really inspiring, really natural sharing community that you guys have built here. It is, it's amazing. I mean, just the energy here as you bring together folks, everybody wants to learn, you know? So everybody wants to learn. There's so many new technologies out there, but new technologies that can turn into business advantage. And you know, the attendees here, they all feel it. And it's a different mixture of people because there's app developers, there's infrastructure and networkers, and just the bringing these folks together to see what they can achieve is amazing. So that's the energy that you can really feel here. And the thing that's interesting, I would like to give a perspective on where this all started from, because DevNet creates interesting, you know, Amazon's Andy Jassy, the CEO of Amazon Web Services, uses the term builders. Yes. So you hear builders, maker culture, create. The creation is a critical part of your ethos here. And with cloud computing, Microsoft's earnings came out, there were a trillion dollar market cap now, Amazon crushes their earnings again. You're seeing what cloud is doing yes. that's enabling these creators, a new class of developer, but it's not like a new breed, it's just a new kind of orientation. This is a, this part it of the is. vision, share the story. Well, and kind of the whole thing is that, you know, so I'm all about innovation and creation, and I believe that people just want to create. You know, my four-year-old, she just wants to create. It's just in people's blood. But to now get out there and to do it, you need a catalyst. Like, you can't just sit in a room and then create. And sometimes it's about how you bring new fields together, how you bring new technologies together, how you bring non-technologies together, right? How you just bring different types of people and perspectives together. And that's really what DevNet Create is all about. So, um, you know, so we started DevNet five years ago, you know, just with the idea that, you know, the network is going to become programmable. The infrastructure is going to provide more resources and it's going to be programmable and provide more power to applications. So from then to now, last summer we hit half a million developers. Now we're at 590,000 developers. Well, we're and lucky. And we're growing, yeah. Well, we're lucky to be part of it, and we thank you for including theCUBE and DevNet Create and bringing us into the DevNet community. It's been fun and inspirational. But, you know, to be practical in the industry, you need to have a, a wind at your back. You need to have a wave to ride on. And creation is also about momentum. And if you look at the marketplace today, there's some big waves happening. You know, cloud computing's obvious one everyone looks at, and that's certainly changed the nature of companies. Cisco's multi-cloud, looking at a bigger vision yeah. there. But new ways are coming. I mean, Wi-Fi 6 yes, is yes, a game yes. changer. You got 5G. <laughs> so you talked about this in the keynote. I want you to take a minute to explain the, the big waves that yeah. you outlined, because with big waves, there's more fun, there's more creation, but there's wealth creation, there's economic vitalization, there's a new vibe. Absolutely. Share the waves. And sign of the whole thing is that we say, there's the infrastructure. You get your networking, you get your compute, it evolves to cloud computing and all of that. But on top of that are these applications and this amazing set of applications and we know that those are creating entirely new and disruptive businesses and business models and there's a lot of growth in all of that. Now traditionally what happens is that with every wave of uh, infrastructure advancement comes a new set of applications and businesses. So going back to our olden days, <laughs> but there was a time when you, know, you started to get a converged IP network where you put data and voice together on an IP network, and then came voice over IP. You know, then came cloud computing, and you could do internet search. And you know, we're old enough to remember before then, and you know, <laughs> uh, you know then you got like 3G, and instead of just having a cell phone, you could do mobile apps on cell phones, so you had mobile apps. And then with 4G, you could do mobile video, and now you just expect it. Now, you could think, okay, the infrastructure is done. But no, there's more. So some of the things that are happening right now that's really exciting is I kind of talked about it in three areas. In networking, we have a couple really big things going on, which is Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. And so there's a whole set, and we'll talk more about that. 
in computing, there's the fact that actually GPUs are everywhere. And with that, you can do AI ML everywhere. So AI and machine learning. And then the third one is just an advancement in architectures. We knew that we moved to mobile, we knew that we moved to compute, but now what becomes real is the edge, edge computing. And so when you bring these things together, you have like new capabilities in network with Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. You have new capabilities in computing because GPUs are everywhere, so you can do AI and ML. And then you actually have a spot at the edge where you can do edge processing. And then all of a sudden there's this whole new world of applications just waiting to be built. And we want to let developers know that, you know, because you kind of develop and you build for what you know. You're like, oh, this is just how good I well, can this do. Is but the, there's a whole new capability coming. Well, first of all, let's, let's unpack those talk tracks because one of the things that I, as an entrepreneur, you know, we've always talked about this, the creativity that comes from entrepreneurial thinking, whether you're yeah. a true entrepreneur starting a company or within a company, doing that inside a company, takes creative juices. You got to have that catalyst, as you mentioned, but also, yeah. you got to imagine new ideas, right? And so by enabling, like say Wi-Fi, for instance, everyone knows what Wi-Fi is. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the new advances of Wi-Fi and having connectivity with wireless and wired networks yes. with new data access, yes. it just opens up this creative outlet. Oh, this yes, This is going to be the tsunami of or the renaissance of applications that you've been talking about. It is, it is, and you know, so like, if we kind of geek out, because I was working on HDTV before it really became <laughs> HDTV, and we were doing things like OFDM, and you know, like we're so excited, spread spectrum technologies, but right now with Wi-Fi 6, we can really geek out again. So OFDM's moving to OFDMA, OFDM multiple access. It means like, an access point usually talks to one client at a time, but now it can split up and talk to multiple clients at a time. And with that, you can actually get much higher capacity, right? So you can actually really use your kind of network more efficiently, you know, and then you can actually now also do scheduling. And then you can actually guarantee that a client is going to be yeah. scheduled in and get transmissions. That changes what you can do with Wi-Fi and the way you think about it, you know, and then there's this power savings because now you can tell a device the time to wake up. So you kind of sleep, 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 sleep. Here's your target wake up time sleep, 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 sleep. Here's your target wake up time. That extends battery life, so you can have sensors that'll be out there for one year, five years, 10 years, doing its thing. And so that takes all those IoT applications you've always wanted to build, but makes them real, yeah. because someone has to go up and install that sensor. And the and GPU the battery anywhere, the other, so the second wave is the GPU anywhere, which I like, because you think of GPUs, you think of NVIDIA, you think of graphics, you think of gaming, but it's actually a processor for machine learning. So it I want is. to get your thoughts on this, because if you have put GPUs on devices everywhere, and the data that you're now accessing across the network brings more intelligence. What's the impact of this GPU anywhere? Is it just IOT? Is it uh, just applications? It's what's the, what's the so net? So many net? areas. Like, so kind of the, the most important thing about it is that before, you kind of needed to have a PhD to do AI and machine learning. Right, and uh, you know, we have friends who are experts at that, and you know, and they're continuing to push the envelope in there. You know, I was just back at MIT, and just the advances in, AI, in ML is, is amazing. But the other thing that's happening is that this is just getting wrapped up so developers can just use it. So you can actually have a tensorflow.js library that'll just sit on your mobile device. You can actually just be using your browser. You can actually write a web app that uses that and then uses the GPU which just means right there, you can just write a little web app, like with five lines of code, you can say, find all the people in this picture. Find the bottles in this picture, right? So just be like yeah. doing that on the fly, and you don't have to have a PhD in machine learning. You can actually, developers can just use this capability. And so that's kind of what unlocks it, is just because it's accessible to everyone, and now you'll get that next wave of innovation when people can just use it and find the right applications for it. So looking at these three big changes that you've talked about, network, compute, architectural, did you leverage these big waves to design this year's Create? Because we're we hearing did. all of that <laughs> in the great technology tracks. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It is, well, so first of all, we have Wi-Fi 6 here, live, and people know there's the idea of it. We've done some performance tests around it, and we're like, it screams. You know, it just, it really does scream. And you're, you're used to not counting on that, right? And so people, it opened up people's eyes and they're thinking differently now about what they can do here. Um, What's the reactions of the, the geeks at Cisco 
when they look at the data of Y56, what's some of the anecdotal reactions that you're saying? What's the, some People of the holy? People are surprised, because everybody's kind of cynical about it. Because, um, quite honestly, even getting ready for it, it's just like, you guys, we're going to jump on Wi-Fi 6. And they're like, oh yeah, well, whatever. And then, you know, one of my guys, Ashutosh, went off and did the speed test, and he started working with it, and he came back into my office, his eyes were popped out of his head. <gasps> It's fast. You, and you showed that yesterday, <laughs> and all the cameras came out like, whoa! <laughs> Everyone, so, because you don't have that expectation, yeah. right? But once you know it, it's going to you know, really unleash this whole new set of things. Um, there's actually something else interesting we did with the edge processing with the GPUs, which is the idea of edge computing, not a new idea. The reality of it is still coming into play. Now, what happens is Cisco just announced some new products is these industrial routers. It's an industrial gateway. It means you can like put it up on a telephone pole, you can put it into a manufacturing plant you know, at high temperatures, and it's the gateway that will connect all of your devices and sensors and be the networking conduit to get everything back. So that's an awesome product, and that product actually hosts applications. And what matters is the deployment of this infrastructure, right? So Cisco's partners will get out there, they're going to sell and you know, kind of install this networking equipment in manufacturing companies, but now it can host applications so developers can actually reach it. And so now that's a place for developers, but we're doing something new here, which is that we have a prototype of taking that product, we have a prototype GPU, uh, you know, an NVIDIA Jetson that we've put on top of it, and we're letting developers hack at it and say, would you use this? Like, tell us some of your best ideas. Like, try it out. Because we still need to figure out the market and what's there, and we're doing it with developers. And where, where do they go with the creativity there? Because obviously, one's a gateway, so they're used to gateways, and they understand edge devices. What are some of the ideas that come out of hacking a GPU? Is it running data analytics on the edge? Is it hosting it an application and you know, managing uh, edge devices themselves? What are some of the All cool of things? I mean, things like video sensing. So now, like at your edge, you have lots of cameras, and because you can do GPU processing, you can actually take these multi-camera inputs, do video sensing algorithms, you know, things that you kind of dreamed about before, but now just doing that for real. You know, finding construction workers, finding the hard hats, right, in the images, like to make sure that you can actually have people be safe. Um, you know, one thing that we know about AI and machine learning is like a lot of times people say, okay, I'm going to hire a data scientist. A data scientist come in, and they can't really get the data. Like they don't have anything to work on until there's a good data set to work yeah. on. Well actually, as you connect up these environments, that's when data's coming in. So you connect up like transportation systems, like SCADA, like utilities yeah. protocols, you're actually talking to manufacturing equipment. Real time data from traffic exactly. or tel exactly. tel Teslas. And so that stuff comes in, but then you need to kind of munch on that data to know when should I be looking? How can I get it into a form that I can do some AI and machine learning So on new it use cases, insights. you expect new use cases to emerge. They are, they are. And, uh, and, and it's really cool because you know, there's a time when there's all of this stuff you can do on the web and in the cloud and with applications, but it's coming back to the physical world. And you that's know. what the, you mean by the edge is the, this architectural thing. That's, it, that's really the edge. The new architecture of having these kinds of capabilities is going to create new sets of applications yes. that we've never seen before. Yes. New startups, new, new applications. It is, and, uh, and really, you know, kind of the thing with DevNet Create is bringing in the community of people who do install infrastructure, knowing that this infrastructure is becoming programmable, and having that able to host the applications and the innovations that are coming from the developers, it's like, it just unlocks entirely new business models. And I think here, these two communities are meeting and mixing, and I think that's the energy that we're seeing out here. It's because they didn't expect to talk to each other. When we started DevNet Create, <laughs> we knew that it was coming. Like, it was coming. <laughs> we didn't know how the people would mix. And this has evolved to where the people are mixing in entirely new ways and yes. making connections. And you know, someone who's written an app is like, oh, you're a partner. You can deploy this in all different countries. That's a new kind of yeah. deployment model yeah, for we, my app. We talked a little bit about that yesterday with our guests as well as Mandy. And 
you know, you've got these kind of different worlds colliding. They are. But one of the things that John pointed out is that this is not a marketing driven event. This is not for lead generation. This is a truly collaborative event. It and is. you're getting clearly developers and infrastructure guys and girls from clearly, very probably, competing companies who are sharing. They are. So I can imagine the cultural change that this can bring to born in the cloud, traditional enterprise, maybe something that wasn't yeah. originally planned, but I could just imagine these worlds cleaning and seeing how much better they can work together. And that is something that, like with, um, with DevNet, so if you even go to the world of networking and IT and you know, just enterprises, uh, there's a new model, right? So things become programmable. People's biggest problem is automation, doing things at scale. Like how do I go ahead and deploy my networks across all of these sites around the world? You can automate that, right? How do I take machinery and get business insights from that so I can actually use it for more? You know, you want to do that in software. And so you have to change your mindset because then it is about collaboration. It's about sharing software and everyone knows that they can get there faster by sharing code and ending up with a code repository. We have code exchange you know, that we've created in DevNet. We just opened it up last year. We now have over 400 repos. We just crossed over 400 You guys are changing the way people are doing work within your own community, both DevNet and DevNet Create, bringing those worlds together and it's working, it's magical. So congratulations on all the success you've had. I got to ask you about your, your journey because you know, we've talked the years before you even joined Cisco and we've been following and talking to you since you, you've been here. Um, and I was saying in our opening yesterday, you know, Cisco as a company is like a big aircraft carrier, it's making the big move, right? And you're seeing yeah. Chuck Robbins, the CEO, cloud, everything has APIs on it, every portfolio product's got APIs, so he's pulling the Satya Nutella move, which is, is, let's get cloudified. Let's figure out our role in cloud computing and beyond, and you're mentioning some of those things. As you continue to show progress in the growth of DevNet and the community, yeah. it's changing Cisco. And we're seeing as we cover with theCUBE, and Chuck's called you up uh, publicly and said, Susie, great job. So there's a, there's a recognition that DevNet and the work you're, you and your team are doing are, is changing the face of Cisco internally and externally. How is that going as the battleship yeah. starts to move? And by the way, data center is still more important than ever before. Yes, With absolutely. hybrid and multi-cloud. Yes. <laughs> Things are lining up for Cisco and you're a big part of it. What's going on in the company? Well, you and know, what's Chuck Robbins saying to you in your meetings with him? It's like, hey, good job, or he, let's double down, oh, or? Oh, yeah, no, Chuck is an amazing leader, and Chuck completely understands the vision. And that's why he's been supporting DevNet. So he's been supporting DevNet, not just because, oh, like he likes Susie or anything like that, it's because he understands the importance of programmability, he understands what it means for starting new businesses and creating new business models, what it means for the ecosystem to grow into it, what that opportunity is. So he's always understood it and I'm super lucky because he's been supporting these efforts. But now what's happening is, of course, he wants more, right? And so, <laughs> uh, and I just presented to Chuck and his executive leadership team last week about the plans that we have going forward. We've actually just kind of what I would say is that we've done the MVP of DevNet. So I know that you know we've gotten the half a million yeah. members, actually almost six hundred thousand. Product market you fit, know, it's all we, there. You know, we now have like real assets. We have a real community. We have you know companies that are changing how they work using our assets and really forming in this community. And now to get it to the next level, he's actually really kind of sponsoring and working with us to develop it to the next level. And, and really, the team is all coming together. The engineering team, the customer experience team, sales and marketing, yeah. like, you know, and then how we work externally with all of our communities. And so we're really growing it to the next level. And you've got level. a great team, you know, we've worked with all your team, we love your team. But one of the things I like about what you've done here is that, and you said it yesterday on stage at closing keynote, you're, you're feeling like a star, you use the word MVP, most minimum viable product, yes. that's a startup word. Yeah. So you have this startup culture and you're in a big company, so it's working. Is it contagious? Are people, you know, are there, are there, are there, are there antibodies coming at you or people are, are joining you? What's going on? Because how do you keep that startup vibe going? Yeah, I think that I'm just very fortunate because my team all has that attitude. Is they're very externally driven, so they're like, how do I help our developers? Like, how do we help our community? How do we bring them along? And we totally drive ourselves by, by that. And then we're constantly asking them, how can we help you more? What do you want from us? And they say, 
if we're doing something that's not useful to you, tell us now so we can stop, so we can build something else. And so we continue to evolve our... That's agile. We're iterating, yeah, yeah, we're just... <laughs> <laughs> and so we actually listen, and then we really figure out how to go to that next level. Now, what's really fun is that also, though, we work with all of the other organizations, right? So, uh, you know, I'm not going to replicate the sales force, we work with them. I'm not going to replicate the SEs that are out in the field. They're using DevNet and they're running their own DevNet Express events in their countries for their partners and customers. So we've really kind of built out, you know, really collaboratively and we've gotten so much support. And like the first days, everybody yeah. was like, hey guys, you have a software strategy, you need to yeah. look at developers, yeah. you need APIs, and they're like, nice job, Susie. Yes, <laughs> keep on going. You're bringing the DevOps but, ethos to the culture. <laughs> DevNet's an API to all the other organizations. It, Why, well, and now yeah. that we are where we are, it's just, it's the partnerships. Like, yeah. our product teams are investing in improving their APIs. We advocate for the developer's viewpoint into those, and it's a collaboration. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I don't make the products, our product teams make the products. I don't sell the product, our sales team sells the products, yeah. right? So we've really brought together the forces and we're fortunate well, because design. everyone's It sounds in. to me like what DevNet is doing is really driving this organic cultural evolution within Cisco. Is it, would you say, <laughs> and maybe I'm making a leap here, that it sounds to me like what I've seen, and this is my first DevNet as well, is that DevNet seems to be an accelerator of Cisco's evolution. I would say maybe it's an accelerator. And you know, I, um, I want to say is that we have great efforts going on across the company and people are trying to figure it out. So I can't say I'm the one driving it. That would just be too much to say. Um, but we are trying to accelerate each other's efforts. And you know, now that we've grown a community, we've provided a platform. Like we do get you know, more than a million eyeballs a month onto our site. And yeah. we use that as a channel. So we're really working to accelerate and kind of catalyze each other's efforts. And if you step out and zoom out, you can see how it all hangs together. You got APIs on all the products, so that's an enabler. You have developer onboarding of new kinds of customers and existing ones melting together, kind of in this melting pot of developers. And you got the cloud way behind you and Edge and AI. And then you can see Cisco becoming multi-cloud. It's almost like it's kind of feeding in the, it's turning in the right spot where I mean, you don't have a cloud, I mean, like you have connectivity, we have you have connectivity. data, you have DevOps, NetApp, NetApp, so it seems like a nice positioning and for the future, but you have you know, all this other revenue and other customers, it so it's, it's mean, going to take we, some time. We, we have great products. Our products five years ago, we had a handful of products with APIs. Now, our whole portfolio is programmable. So that's not my efforts, those are the product teams building great products and entering this world of programmability. You know, we're bringing in the community and giving them the tools so that they can use them, right? So otherwise you can't just make a product and have it sit there. Okay, you what was your presentation to Chuck? What's the vision? Where do you go next? Got some great momentum. Congratulations on the success. We love being part of it. It's a lot of action. It's very inspiring, intoxicating at the same time. What's next? What's the vision? Yeah, so, um, Really if we, and I love the way that we've built up DevNet, is because we started with our developers in the community that needed to become developers or power users of software, right? Um, so we've done the technical enablement, like we have documented APIs, we have learning labs, we have sandboxes so people can just code. So we've really been focusing on enabling them and providing all that technical enablement. And now what happens is people are asking us, how do I make this real? How do I spread this across my organization? How do I bring these solutions to my customers and into the world? And in order to do that, I need to change how I do manufacturing. In order to do this, I need to change how we build solutions. And so help us with that fuller solution. So we're um, really stepping up to you know, go beyond the technical enablement to just bringing it to reality and to real solutions that are in operational environments and so it's just really exciting to be working together on all that. And uh, we'll have a bunch of more new stuff coming that we'll talk about at Cisco Live. And you have a great party Live. at Cisco Live. <laughs> you always have the social club <laughs> event. You got to get do. that, keep that going, right? Of course, we'll keep <laughs> the social club going and we'll have a bunch of new things to announce at Cisco Live as well. <laughs> exciting, that's just a few weeks from now. So last question, your takeaway from the, some of the anecdotes that you've heard the last day and a half of DevNet Create 3. Yeah, so, you know, Kind of the vision that we had set forward, and it's one that you know we've been thinking about, is just that the infrastructure really enables a new set of applications and business models. 
and we had the idea of it, but again, with these advances that we talked about with Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, with you know GPUs enabling AI and machine learning and with edge computing, is that people get it. And people know that it's not like someday we'll have this, someday we'll have that, which I've been in research, I know that view, but it's actually like right here and right now. And so. Making it real. Making it real, and it's available for people to use. Like this next one, two years is going to be super exciting for the industry because it's not just theoretical, it's not just what it could do, but there's real tools that are right out there for people to develop exciting new things. I wish I was younger, I wish I was in my 20s. I mean, like, <laughs> That's okay, we, I mean, we, we, we take old people from? and young people yeah. all together, <laughs> diversity, <laughs> yes. Diversity, yeah. inclusion. Yeah. 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 More inclusive, Absolutely. young and old. Um, yeah. It's so exciting because it's such an enablement and knowing what's the mega trends that are the, the real waves, yeah. it's actually real, it's happening. Yeah, and I actually want to, actually while we do talk about diversity and inclusion and enablement, what's really exciting is, uh, you know, I just brought is that we have some of our partners who are transforming themselves and uh, we actually have some women in tech initiatives that have started out. So Tell, I love Presidio, that, tell us about it. Yeah, share. Okay, so Presidio, Verizon, they've invested, like, they've invested in helping the women in their organizations, well, they're helping everybody evolve to embrace programmability and automation to understand the application, uh, you know, the opportunities there. So they are fully kind of taking this paradigm and transforming their workforces to embrace it. But in addition, we've partnered to also you know, provide extra support and call out for the women who are making the journey and who have to you know, face maybe some additional challenges or just ensuring that they have the opportunity and they get the visibility. And they've both sponsored, so Presidio, Verizon, have both sponsored bringing some of their women to DevNet Create. I loved how you brought them on stage this morning without them telling them, but I looked over <laughs> you and you just had this genuinely enormous smile of pride. Oh, I'm so proud of them. So, oh, and yeah. you should be, but that's that's amazing that, that Cisco and DevNet is, t is also making that investment in women in technology. Uh, and we're doing it together with them and you know, I'm just proud of what they're doing and you know, this is the workforce. Like every, you saw the woman up on stage, if you guys watch the keynote, you'll see that it, it's out there. These are the people you yeah. want to hire, yeah. you know? And Absolutely. why would you not use that workforce, right? Exactly, so. why would you not? And get them all young too, like you mentioned your daughter, right? She, when she started putting the Meraki switch at home, <laughs> you, know, you, know you know you've made it. Right? Yes, 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 no, she's, almost she's ready. demanding a computer from she's me almost already. Ready. She's like, mommy, you have two, how come I don't have one? <laughs> she says, mommy, why are you using command line? <laughs> <laughs> That's next. <laughs> Susie, you are an inspiration an inspirational yeah. female in technology. We, we, we all often gravitate towards Sheryl Sandberg. I think we should start including Susie Wee in that. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you for very much. having us at DevNet. It's been a pleasure to meet you and have the chance to interview you. And we can't wait to see what, where do you go from here? We'll continue to change the world together. Thank you. Uh, I love it. Awesome. <laughs> for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.